thank you so much for your kind introduction. I could only guess what you talked about. It's uh, very nice to uh, come here, and it's a great honor to be invited uh, to be at the speaker in this distinguished lecture series. So this is really uh, my great honor, great pleasure to be here. So, uh, because basically the, the topic, it's, so I was, the organizer asked me to talk something about the East and the West issue. So I choose something. It's based on the taxonomy, science, and so on and so forth, and the rise of humanities, and those things happened in China since the end of the 19th century down to the 20th century, how that developed. So this is basically, this is my uh, topic. So here, the, the, main, uh, the main topic is, is also related to these issues, idea of science, culture debates, and the reclassification or the taxonomy of knowledge in early 20th century. So the extensive application of the concept of science is one of the uh, main characteristics of Chinese thought in 20th century. I guess it's everywhere, almost. So when we talk about the taxonomy, it's inevitable. Started from the discussion on the conception or the concept and the conception of science. Since the later Qing Dynasty, science has served as a symbol of and a call for liberation, as well as the objective criterion for all social and cultural reform. As a stand-in for a universalist world outlook, science has provided not only arguments for the necessity of the reforms advocates of a new culture hoped for, but also objectives and the paradigms for the reform. The power of science lies in the fact that it is established an intimate connection between a universalist worldview and a kind of the cosmo cosmopolitan and a nationalist social system that the almost at the same time, at the same time that serve as for the cosmopolitanism or the nationalism. And through a rationalized classification of knowledge and a social division of labor incorporated in its broader genealogy, human life, in all its forms and tendencies. Now, the, the, the word science in Chinese is a kershia is one of the most widely used keywords in the 20th century China. Its earliest source comes from the Japanese Mingji scholar Nishi Ameni, who in 1874 in the miracle Zashi uh, translated the English word science using the Chinese characters for Kershia. That's the beginning when we use, now we had the, the term of Kershia. Nietzsche was deeply influenced by the positivist philosophy of Auguste Comte and John Stuart Mills. And the term Kershia was produced under the influence of Comte's branches of learning, so branches of learning or the taxonomy of learnings. Besides the natural sciences, it also included the religion, morality, art, and the society, together providing a universal method that was generally applicable. He translated the, uh, for example, it's quite interesting. He translated so many terms, including the philosophy, not only the science, Kershia, but also Zhezhe in Chinese is also came from the Japanese translation. Respect as the study, but he employed all these terms from Chinese Confucianism, especially the new Confucianism after the Song Dynasty. So he used that term the study of nature and the principle, study of principle, study of exhausting principle, study of the strivings of the wise, study of strivings for wisdom, and finally, he settled upon the study of wisdom to translate the philosophy. But actually, these kind of terms, I later I will tell you that uh, these terms sometimes also used to translate the science too. This is the mixed usage of that the same Chinese characters to translate the different the, the, the subject. The first part of the Shuhaku Saki that states all of the uh, sciences and techniques have one thread running through them, which is very critical because having established a unified outlook in study and the technique, people's activities can be organized, society's order can be stabilized. Family and the state can be become powerful and rich, and the study 
typifies the superior man, thus establishing a unified outlook and exhausting the subtleties of study and the technique. But one man cannot do all of these. Therefore, for establishing a unified outlook, it is the philosopher's role to construct a discussion and the explication, whereas to exhaust the subtleties of the particular study and the technique, these function belongs to the expert in that field. So he argued the importance of philosophy or the metaphysics, put that at the top of the hierarchy of the whole knowledge. If you compare to the construction of the modern Japan, that the empire building, the emperorship was really linked to that the mysterious metaphysics. So this, you find that the parallel or the interaction of the structure of knowledge and the construction of the new society, so struck political order here. So in a manner similar to Mingji, the early Mingji Japan, during the later Qing dynasty, science, Kershaw, various studies, Zhu Xue, Zhu Zhong the Zhu, that uh, and the other concepts that indicated fields of knowledge were related to Western knowledge or the Western studies that the Xi Xue. And these specialist fields of knowledge had been introduced for the purpose of political reform and self-strengthening. Therefore, the use of scientific terms and the translation of Western knowledge had a very close relationship. In 1890, when the Chinese scholars began to use the word Kershaw, its direct source was from Japanese catalog. For example, in the uh, spring of 1898, Kang Youwei edited the catalog of Japanese books, Ribben Shu Muzhi, published by the Da Tong Translation Bureau. So that kind of the taxonomy came from the Japanese catalog of publication. That publication came from the Europe. So this is the, uh, they translated the, uh, the, the encyclopedia from Britain into Japanese. And according to that kind of the catalog, published a different kind of the books. So it is worth noting that the titles entered under the schools of principle, Li Xuemen, that uh, were in the natural sciences. In the catalog of Japanese books, mostly included the physics, chemistry, clinics, uh, meteorology, geography, mineralogy, biology, philosophy, religious studies, psychology, logic, morality, among other volumes, were separately arranged the categories for uh, uh, physiology, religion, history, uh, uh, the politics, law, agriculture, industry, commerce, education, literature, linguistics, aesthetics, novels, military, workers, the division are not very strict, but it is truly categorized according to the nature and the function of various studies or the branches of learning. In 1902, Liang Qichao, in a note on the relation between the geography and the civilization, defined the science, culture in this way, anything which becoming a field of study is called a science. This is like investigating things and extending knowledge, Gurdzhi and the various studies. Here, the extent of the field of study is comparatively broader than the extent of Gurdjie. And the notion of various studies with the branches of learning as a precondition also has a relation to the later Qing educational system reform. As with the difference of position in Nietzsche's philosophy or unified vision with its science of sciences, that the metaphysics or the philosophy is a science of sciences. Later Qing Chinese scholars were prone to use the concept of groups or the society and the category of sociology, but at that time was translated into Qing Xue, this is Qin, to unify the fields of knowledge, thus placing the classification of study of fields of knowledge within the frame of an idea model of society. This pattern is derived from the count and the Herbert Spencer's sociology and the concept of the group in ancient Chinese thought. Thus, the branches of learning are closely related to the overall view of society, the universe, and the nature. Especially for the Yan Fu, I would like to, to introduce that he used the term 
of the Qingxue quite oftenly and uh, translated the Qingxue Yi and, and so that would directly came from the sociology. But he at the beginning he rejected used the term of the Xie Hui, you know, that the, now the sociology translated into the Xie Hui Xue. By Xie Hui, he thought that it's almost like a Hui Xie in Japanese, like a co corporation. So it's a accumulation of individuals, not a, the composed of a real society. So he argued that we need to use the traditional term for the groups or the social. It's a real social bonds, moral essence within there. So they talk about the sociology in that sense, like a, a little bit like a Durkheim's idea, maybe. So, it, so that's why he put that the sociology at the top of the hierarchy of that taxonomy of the, all the knowledge, replaced the metaphysics.